When comes my numbered day, I will meet it smiling, for I'll have kept this oath. I shall use my arms to shield the weak, I shall use my lips to speak the truth, and my eyes to seek it. I shall use my hand to meet justice to high and to low, and I will weigh all things with heart and mind. Where I walk, the laws will follow, for I am the sword of my people and the shepherd of their lands. When I fall, I will rise through my brothers and my sisters, for I am eternal. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I am your host, Liam, aka Himvar. Today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Howard Andrew Jones's Upon the Flight of the Queen. Upon the Flight of the Queen is a 2019 novel in book two in the Rings Horton trilogy by Howard Andrew Jones. I have done a spoiler-free review for the first book, For the Killing of Kings, and I will link that here for those interested. Now, this is best summarized, I believe, well, a decent summary of this book without spoiling a lot is the part of the blurb that is on the inner flap. And it says, while the Altenari fight impossible odds to save the realms, their queen dwell delves further and deeper into the magic of the mysterious hearthstones and a frantic attempt to unlock secrets that might just destroy them all, end quote. Now, I originally didn't actually have a ton to say about this book as it's just a lot of action it continues right to where the first book left off and it goes in some ways about where you'd expect it but then it started going in ways where i wasn't expecting it which is mostly what i want to talk about today i want to say like if you like Zelazny and fantasy you've already read the first book i want to say that i enjoyed this book a lot more than i did the first book i thought the first book was decent and i enjoyed it hence why i read the second one but Overall, I thought this one was just way better. There's a lot more to think on. We do get more points of view from the Naor. Um, it actually get, takes a while for us to get a point of view from Ill and I. I think it's like chapter six is the first one. We do get a decent amount from Rylan, though more so in the first half rather than the second half. Um, but really, really, really good stuff going on here. Uh, when we go to the Naor, it's mostly Vanek, who is a pretty interesting character as she is, well, he, she, depends on who you ask, right? Uh, she's a female, um, but in her culture, she's sort of a man, but not really at the same time. Um, it's kind of interesting. Now, in this book, I kind of feel like we deal with like what it means to be human, what it means to be a good leader, and like how to deal with like grief and trauma and like how love works because there's some interesting relationships like status stuff basically going on here. And an interesting thing as this like this is kind of a mix of classic sword and sorcery with more modern heroic fantasy and that is to say that the action is very much in a sword and sorcery style but it deals a lot more with well the fate of the world essentially right i mean like this is the five realms and on that topic actually there is a map in this book well there is not a map for the first book now i will say i have this physically but i also have it digitally and i think the narration is great i didn't do the narration for the first book but i've done a lot more audiobooks this year and I will say I was mostly in the audiobook and I didn't feel like I needed the map at all. Um, I would say it wasn't really needed. It was a bit odd going through it with the first book. Um, but even this, I didn't look at it. I didn't look at the map at all. It's nice having it. I will admit that, but I didn't look at it at all. So we do find out more about the world, um, kind of what's going on. I think one of the more interesting things is kind of like the characters are somewhat realistic that when it kind of becomes evident they're on the wrong side, they, they switch <laughs> or... Like they switch sides kind of right or even when kind of like we have some preconceived notions about these characters and that's uh, well we're wrong on them essentially you know it's 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 pretty interesting actually i was really really pleased with this book especially after the first couple chapters up to the very end and i was like wow it almost makes me want to go right into the third book which for those unaware i i like never do that these days i'm in the middle of dozens of series and i generally at least at least need one book in between um well books in a series and i know this one will be actually more than one book in between this and the, the third book in the series which is when the goddess wakes but i actually need to co get a copy of that still so i'm really looking forward to it though now um based off well this book and so Anyways, I just wanted to share those brief thoughts. Um, I am impressed with Howard Andrew Jones' style. 
um, the work he's able to put in by kind of bringing in some new modern readers. Though at the same time, like seeing like what he says like on Discord, because he is in the Whetstone Discord, uh, I feel like this is maybe not even what he wants to be writing. Like he's more of just like a sword and sorcery, maybe like strictly type of guy. At least that's what he wants to do. And he's actually the editor for Tales from the Magician School, which is probably like the premier uh, sword and sorcery magazine uh, these days. But anyways, it's been Liam with Liam's Lyceum. Um, I know these thoughts are kind of rambly, but I will say just overall, I really enjoyed this story. We get a lot more world building. We got a lot more character development. We get a lot more to think about and a lot more to entertain in my mind. It's just, it's just much better than the first book, in my opinion. And so if you were worried about that, then, well, read this.